Please welcome Jason Reynolds. Award-winning author. I'm telling you, I was so impressed with him. I read this about you. I hadn't heard of him, to be honest Tonight, with you. Tonight, author Jason Reynolds. Dear Dreamer. If you want to see something crazy, look at this. This is what my desktop always looks like. All documents, videos, photos. This is sort of something I've been kind of kicking around uh, since I've been here. I don't know, just trying to keep all of the, the ideas kind of cooking. I'll show you something, some, I'll show you some super, super fresh stuff. When you use space or you use the page, you can kind of create um, your own sort of, your own sort of score with the white space on the page, right? So like if you look at this one, right, it says a box. It, like it, it, you know, it's super simple, it's nothing crazy. It just has a box, a heavy box. But you know, a box, a heavy box is different like this than it is like this, right? A box, a heavy box becomes a box, a heavy box. And it, like the mind is doing that, right? The mind is gonna do that. And then you can have a, you know, this one works, right? Not a big box or a small box, but big enough to notice and small enough to hide. I want that to be sort of like, I want the rhythm of that to be like da 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 Right? Instead of it being sort of like not a big enough box or a small enough box, but big enough to notice and small enough to hide in the closet in the corner under other heavy things, it can be not a big enough box, but a big enough, not a big, not, not a big box or a small box, but big enough to notice and small enough to hide in a closet in a corner under other heavy things. That's the way I think about it. So all this time in my head, all this time sort of taking all this information, all the writing, the rewriting, the, the throwing this against the wall, that against the wall, scribbling this and scribbling that, this is what it amount, amounts to at the end of the day. Um, and it's a trip every time. It's a trip. Dear Dreamer, when it comes to my dream, the way I like to describe it is that it's a rabid beast that found me when I was young. It bit me and affected me but before I could catch it, it shot off into the darkness. I write my books to, to tell good stories. Um, I happen to focus on young people because I think that young people still have so many interesting things to explore. There's a sense of wonder and a sense of curiosity and a sense of innocence and a sense of preciousness and a sense of fear and anxiety that adults tend to mask. There's an imagination that adults tend to lose. Adult novels tend to be, for me, tend to be a bit more limiting than young people's literature, even though the argument is that young people's literature is limiting. Right? That, that you can't say this or you can't say that. But people who say that have no idea what it actually is. I say anything I want to say. I write about whatever I want to write about. No matter how traumatic or how complicated it is, I write about that because that's the lives of children in America today. I knew the ice cream truck. I knew my next door neighbors and their, and their fathers sort of dying. I knew double dutch jump rope and, and, and four wheel roller skates. You knew where not to go and you knew where to go. You knew when, what neighborhoods you couldn't step foot in and what streets you couldn't go down, right? You knew who had the mean dogs and whose dog was always off the leash, who had the Rottweiler, who had the pit bull. You knew these things and I never saw that in the book. Where were those stories for me? They didn't exist, so I didn't read. It was in the ownership of my own story. that my life was sort of expanded. It was in the honesty in my, in, in my own experiences that made room for me. Me and my friend Danny, as kids, eight years old, no need jeans and hand-me-down t-shirt from Sean, flower dress, shorts underneath for Danny, who hung from a monkey bar, tongue hanging from her mouth like pink candy. The sun shining in my eyes, the sunshine in hers. My mother would make you feel so badly 
if your clothes were wrinkled. Like she just felt like if you're gonna step out of our home, you're gonna represent this house. And because I come from a black community, my mom always felt like you're gonna represent this house, your neighborhood, and every black person on earth. You're the representative of this culture, this history, right? And a lot of us are sort of taught and trained and brought up this way, this sort of collective, you are we, right? You are all of us. And so you have to present yourself a certain way. For her generation, it was about clean shoes. It was like, look, no matter what, you, you shine your shoes before you step out of the house because your shoes say a lot about you when it comes to you bumping up against opposing forces, right? And so even to this day, I, I can't leave the house. I gotta iron my clothes. Like I'm very particular about all those things. Um, you, you go to a school and no one knows what you look like. And you say, I'm here for the, I'm Jason Riddles. And they can't believe it because I'm, I'm here like this. This is it. What you see is what you get, right? And they can't believe it. And it's been off-putting at times. Or, I mean, all this hair, right? This is also, you know, this is something that not everybody understands or not everybody is sort of, um, not everybody wants to understand. But at the end of the day, I don't care. This is me. There are kids in your class who look like me. There are kids in your schools and your neighborhoods that look like me. And they're usually the kids that you call dames. And guess what those kids can grow up and become? Me. Dear Dreamer, when it comes to my dream, the way I like to describe it is that it's a rapid beast that found me when I was young. Do you use the power that you have to help manipulate the urban community in a positive way? Word. That's how you want to start off the conversation. You just got, <laughs> I think I just want to create work that helps young people feel cared for. That's it. It doesn't mean that that work has to be work about being cared for. It just means that you want, I want people to read it and be like, yo, this feels real. It feels like me. It feels like people that I know. It feels like things I've heard about. I, this feels like tangibly real. Oh man, so many kids. Ooh. There's just so many kids. I don't, I mean, if I, you know, all the kids who have said that my books are the first books they've ever read, my books are the books they, you know, they've changed them in some, in some sort of way. I mean, it's powerful. Kids who have been, had experiences with police officers and who have voiced that and said, look, I've been through this. My brother has been murdered by a cop or, I mean, all that is just, I mean, I carry all those things with me. I don't know if there's ever a way to sort of, sort of shake it off, you know. I remember a kid in Philadelphia once, look me in the face and ask me if I ever wish my skin was different. Uh, I carry her a lot because I think about how these books have an opportunity to let her know that it's okay, that we're okay, right? And that not only, not only should we be all right with who we are, we should celebrate it. I come from a people who was never supposed to read. And here I am writing. I come from a legacy of people who weren't supposed to be here. So to look that little girl in the face, I think she was like nine. And, and, to, and to pour into her and to let her know that she's much bigger than she could ever know. That the codes that come along with this skin, right? The history that comes, oh, she has no reason to be ashamed. Dear Dreamer, when it comes to my dream, the way I like to describe it is that it's a rabid beast that found me when I was young. It bit me and affected me but before I could catch it, it shot off into the darkness. Now I spend my life searching for it, hunting it down. I look under heavy stones, behind massive trees, deep in dark caves, and I will keep looking until I find that beast, that thing that bit me when I was young. say if my books are still being read 40 years from now in schools, they may taught as the books that are introducing young people to literacy in schools, I failed. 40 years from now, we ain't figured out new books yet. Language is living, it's growing, it's expanding, it's changing, it's evolving. People are living and growing and changing and expanding and evolving. Books have to continue to do the exact same thing in order for us to, in order for them to see eye to eye with the young people in which they're trying to um, engage with. Uh, simple as that.